not only did I not know a single thing about RVing, I had no idea that there was even this thing called the RTR. That's where the story begins. Not only did I not know anything about RVing, I didn't even know about the RTR, Bob Wells, Nomads, nothing. So how about I tell you my story with the RTR going on in the background. I hope that works. So I rented an RV from El Monte RV. And because I rented it, I was locked in to specific dates. That's integral to the story, which is why I make mention of it. I had come to realize that during the month of January that there is a huge contingency of full-time RVers that come to Quartzsite, Arizona. And being in Las Vegas, it wasn't that far of a drive. So that was my intended destination when I rented this RV. Now, not knowing anything about the existence of this thing called the RTR, I was trying to create my own RTR in terms of I set my visit up to try to do all the different things I would need to do in an RV to see if I liked it. Meaning I had booked some time in an RV park so I could plug in and learn how to dump and fill the water and all that. And then I had also booked some time boondocking but it was kind of a cheat. I was boondocking within an established RV park. And that way I figured if I had any trouble, help wasn't too far away. I had also befriended um, a handful of people here, you know, like somebody over at the yacht club, the Quartzite Yacht Club, and he was all prepared to be my first stop. So he knew when I arrived, I was going to be green as all get out and not know a darn thing. So he was prepared for that and he was going to help me get in my spot and show me how to hook up and all that good stuff. I had made friends with the RV park owner where I was going to boondock. So when I got over there, he was all prepared to help me set up for boondocking, whatever the heck that means. The dates that I picked coincided with the big tent event because that was online and I knew about it. Okay, so that's the plan. But as we all know, plans change. Now, one of the YouTubers, I think really the only YouTuber I was watching back then, my very beginning, my entree, was Carolyn's RV Life. And that was back in the time when she was giving a lot of helpful tips, you know, like, you know, putting shoes out to fool people that there's another person and having two chairs out and, you know, stuff like that. Well, since I was following her and watching her videos, it's getting closer to the RTR time. And she puts up a video and says something about, I might not make it to the RTR, my RV broke down. And I was like, what's the RTR? So of course I Google and I start going down that rabbit hole and I got so mad because if I had known that the RTR existed and what it was, oh my God, that is totally where I would have wanted to be. The problem was I was locked into my RV dates and I couldn't change them. So I was arriving in Quartzsite the last day of the RTR. Oh! Well, as I was going down the RTR rabbit hole at that time, there had been a video about how you check in with the camp host and you know how to get to him. It was camp host Mike. If you're out there, hi Mike. So I get here to Quartzsite. I go to the yacht club. My friend Kenny, he has a channel, Class C Kenny. Cute name, right? So Kenny's all ready to like like, you know, help me get settled in. And when I wake up the next morning, which is the last day of the RTR, I think to myself, I'm gonna go try to find this scat and wash place and just see what happens. So I head out to scat and wash because back in those days, that was the BLM area where the RTR used to be held. And I found my way to the camp host and when I got there, I said, you know, are any of the RTR people still here? And he's like, I don't know, 
but he's like, you're welcome to go. If you stay for the night, don't worry about it. But if you stay any longer, you got to come back out and, you know, sign in and all that good stuff. So the nice thing about Skadden Wash is it's just one road. And as I started driving down it, I see there's all these little offshoots. And every single offshoot has a little banner for a different club. The boomers, the these, the that's, and I think, oh no, I'm never gonna find the RTR because it's the last day. And so for sure they've taken their flag, their little banner away, marking like this is the road to turn off to. <sighs> so as I am driving this way, I have got RVs and vans coming this way, and I'm like, excuse me, excuse me. And people are stopping. I mean, come on, we're not even going that fast, but you know, people are stopping and I'm like, is this the way to the RTR? And they're like, yeah, but it's over. And I'm like, that's okay, that's okay. I wanna see if I could find it. So ultimately, I did find my way to where there was the remnants of the RTR. And I'm pretty sure what was going on was because on BLM land here um, and in Skadden Wash, it's a 14 day limit. So I'm fairly certain that there were people who had arrived late to the RTR but still had time on their permits and so they were still all camping out there. So it was wonderful. I got greeted by a longtime RTR volunteer, Beth and she sort of took me under her wing and I mean it was really obvious that I was new and had no clue what was going on because I had this big El Monte RV across the front of my rental but anyway so she helped me get squared away she introduced me to other people around and that's where I spent most of the time while I was here in Quartzsite so I always said that my first RTR was the post RTR <laughs> RTR and I got loads of training there. Let's see, I took the dogs for a walk and I went through a wash and then walked through a little close to someone's campsite. So I got schooled in uh, etiquette as far as crossing people's campsites, even on BLM land. I also was not thrilled with the space in my RV. And I had mentioned that to my new friend, Beth, and she's a van dweller, by the way. And I knew who I was talking to, but when she asked me how things were going, I said, you know, I need more space. And she's like, honey, you don't say you need more space to a van dweller. And she knew I was, you know, kind of being funny. And she said, listen, you don't need more space. She said, you don't like the floor plan. She said, so here's what you need to do. You need to start looking, and whenever you see an RV that's about the size that you like, you need to go ask them, hey, can I come inside and take a look at your floor plan? Because she said, when you find the right floor plan, you will have a completely different experience. And she's absolutely right. The right floor plan is key. Thank you, Beth. And then, as Paul Harvey says, the rest of the story goes like this. On my drive back home to Vegas, I came across the sign to Havasu and the sign to, I think, Needles. And it's very confusing because one side says the number of the highway I need, but the wrong city, which is Havasu. And the other one says a different number, but it says the t a city that I know I passed, which I think was Needles. I was just like, which way do I go? Which way do I go? And it just so happens that at that point, there's like a gas station and um, you can get propane. So while I'm deliberating, I happen to notice that there is a lady in an RV about the size of what I think I'm comfortable with. And so I'm gonna ask her if I could see her floor plan. So she's sitting there minding her own business, <laughs> filling up the propane, and I'm like, hi, my name's Kim, I'm a new RVer, and I'm gonna get an RV, but I don't know which one, and can I see the inside of your RV? And she just looks at me and she's like, I guess, give me a minute. And that, was my friend Linda, who I told you in my last video is my first RV friend ever. And she really did become like a mentor to me because 
it didn't stop with, can I see your floor plan? <laughs> Thank you, Linda. And as I drove the rest of the way back to Las Vegas to return the RV, I was 100% clear that I had had such a phenomenally good time that I did not want to uh, continue to be renting up in Big Bear for the winter, which is what I was doing. I wanted to take the money that was left and I wanted to go find me an RV. Oh my God, I don't know whether I'm coming or going. I'm editing videos for my client. I'm shooting videos for me. I'm uploading to YouTube. <laughs> I'm completely losing track of everything, but I'm having a great time. Anyway, I was editing the video and realized I forgot to tell you the best part of my first RTR. So remember, I told you that my entree into this whole thing was via Carolyn of Carolyn's RV Life. Well, when I got to the Skadden Wash area and the RTR area, guess who was parked off in the distance? Why, it was Miss Carolyn! So, I thought I would go over and, you know, I just wanted to say hi. I wanted to tell her that I was actually there because of her. I mean, I didn't just watch her video. I actually went and did it. And I wanted to give her a hug. Anyway, I must have walked over to her RV, I don't know, maybe three different times. And each time she didn't seem to be around. I mean, I, I learned that you don't just go walk up on someone's camp. You kind of stand at a distance and kind of go, hello, knock, knock. And I wasn't getting an answer. <laughs> I don't know if she was there, if she was sleeping, if she was working, if she was just recuperating. Cause you know, I think she had given a lot of presentations that year. Anyway, I never did see her. But on more than one occasion, I kept running into somebody who was coming to visit her. And I don't know who he was, he was a very nice man. I had a couple brief conversations with him, you know, is Carolyn there, whatever. And you know who it was? <laughs> it was Bob. <laughs> and I had no idea <laughs> who he was, why he was, that he had anything to do with this event that I was attending. It was pretty funny. So you gotta admit, I got a pretty good first RTR story, don't you think? Okay, now I think this video can be complete. See you next time.